Today we will see how the will can produce the law. You know? And we have seen how the reality could produce the law, then how the will, eh, the, the intellect, the knowledge, the thing that we know can produce eh, the law in some sense. And finally, we will see what about the will and some mixed eh, sources of law. That's so why first we will talk about legal activity. What is legal activity? Well, this is all the acts of the will that produce the law. Easily we will see with a lot of detail this. And what kind of principles uh, governs legal activity? We will see here, especially one principle that is so important is that this is the principle of equity. After that, we will see some types of legal activity. Well, a lot of types. Classifications will be a lot. But I will be especially focused in some classifications, in some types of legal activity, five, six, more or less. And you have to remember that types of legal activity because after that, we will play a game called Kahoot. I don't know if you have seen Kahoot. <laughs> it's a good game. I enjoy it a lot. But uh, it's important to know, uh, well, to, to prove that you are understanding the world the lecture. Uh, and after that game, we will continue with the unfair art. Unfair acts can produce law. Uh, well, we have seen that in some in some sense, yes, but uh, not always, no, uh, and not in the same way that the fair acts produce law. Uh, so we will see some general provisions about that. Uh, what kind of of source of law could be this? Uh, then we will be focused especially in the unjust decisions, in the unjust law, for example. No? Um, finally, we will see how forgiveness and tolerance could work. If it is compulsory, if it is forbidden, when you have to apply one of them or not. Then, after finish the unfair act, we will see some mixed source of the law. Mixed, well, mixed because it's not just the will that produce the law, but it's the will plus legal conceptions plus reality. reality. And with this, we will finish all the sources of the law today. <laughs> so, Let's go ahead with the first topic, with our first learning objective, that is legal activity, and especially the notion, the notion and the principles. This one. So, what is legal activity? Uh, well, with some definition, we have to say. Recently, no, we can say that is any act of the will, any act of the will that generates legal effects. It's not just I want to be Superman, no, <laughs> it's an act of the will, obviously. No, I want to be in the Halcon uh, interspace ship. <laughs> because it is not possible. It is just for a background, for example. <laughs> uh, well, should generate uh, some legal effect. For example, there, there, there 
there are many examples now or specify the legal space that is the same no? because uh, if my legal space change or yours with my one act of my will well uh, it has some legal effect let's put some examples to 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 give you the, the notion no? an agreement what is an agreement well is two wheels, three or more, <laughs> that are in, are in accordance, that creates a, a, a kind of law no? between the parties. And that is an agreement. No? Well, some lo other legal acts could be also. What kind of legal acts? For example, when you sue a demand in the court, well, you you obviously are doing a and some act that is legal that have some legal effects. So it's, I think that this is too easy. Another example: the decision that approves one law. The decisions that approves one law. Or is it could be the decision of the parliament, no? If the parliament uh, votes all the people there and approves uh, one law, well, that decision obviously produces a lot of effects, legal effects in the country in the next years. Yeah, it, it is clear. I think so. Legal activity also could be an omission, an omission of the will, but not all kind of omissions. For example, uh, <laughs> one omission of mine could be, well, I never brought a book. Well, probably, yes, it's an omission, but it, it, mm, it is not compulsory. I have not that uh, obligation, that duty. So we can say, the, that kind of omissions uh, not really produce any kind of legal effect, but there are another. That's why I put here consented omission. In some way, there should be the 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 notion of the will. No? For example, sleep. No, sleep could be <laughs> in two ways. No, uh, if I sleep. Uh, obviously, well, uh, doesn't matter. Probably, uh, well. But if if I sleep because I have a, well, a, 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 an agreement and I have to work, probably it has some some legal effect. No, <laughs> yeah, uh, I have to be in my work office and I'm sleeping in my bed. Well, it has a lot of consequences. No. So, uh, because I, I'm not fulfilling an agreement with my em employee. Um, and finally, finally, also unjust uh, acts, for example, crimes. Any crime is a, it's a, an act of the will that produce legal effects, no? Because the policeman will begin an investigation and the judge will will see if I'm got guilty or not, and if so, I will be in jail. And all these kind of things are regulated by the law. So, as you can see, all of this we can call legal activities because are acts of the will that has a have. Uh, some legal effects, no? So, you understand this, we can move to the next uh, part, no? the principles of the legal activity. What kind of principles should govern the legal activity? It is very important, no? To begin first with the notions, then with the aims, values, and principles. Are, 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 are all of them, uh, together. No? So, the first principle that 
it was used to study in all faculties is the principle of hierarchy. Hierarchy uh, is a well-known principle that you have uh, some notice about this. <laughs> and in all the, the schools used to, all people used to, to explain the fictional hierarchy. What is the fictional? The produced hierarchy by the will, no? Is the will of the legislator or of the people or of the country that says that fish should be one norm, that is the constitution. Then it will be another norm. In many places could be the treaties, the international treaties. Uh, and then the laws of the country in so many places, but in the laws of the countries we can find so many classes, classifications of law and some types, yeah, and there is, a, and for example, in some countries, organic laws and ordinary laws, and then the regulation and some policies, resolutions, and so on. So, but this is just the fictional, the, uh, the created by the, the human will hierarchy. As we have seen, in the theory of the inverted pyramid, there is another level uh, higher than the will, no? that is the level of the intellect, <laughs> and probably culture, and the notions that every society has, is also another level, yeah, a natural level higher than the will. No? And finally, obviously, reality, reality. The reality imposes us uh, some limits. Uh, the limit, the legal system. So uh, we have talked about uh, this so much, so I think that it should be clear. Next principle, the principle of formalization. Formalization the things that are in the reality, the being, the potencies, the objects or, or aims, the things that, that our intelligence consider that is valuable, um, that our intelligence consider that should be protected as goods, um, propose some principles. At one point is formalized in a, the Britain law, for example, or in a custom or in the positive law, that is the legal activity. No? So legal activity should confirm, specify, and formalize the space of legal conceptions. Legal conceptions. So, uh, all the things that the society has in their mind, uh, in, in, in his mind, obviously uh, should be uh, specified in a written law uh, and in this way uh, it would be easy uh, well, to understand what is the law in this country that is confirmed but when there are so many possibilities for example like the possibility of democracy monarchy anarchy and so on uh, it's not just a confirmation. A confirmation is you don't have to kill the innocent. That the rule that is in all mind or intellect, but uh, it's just a confirmation. But if you have some possibilities in your mind, the will will choose one. And that's why we put confirm or specify. No? There are just two possibilities and obviously uh, formalized in a legal law, a legal positive uh, law, obviously. No? Next principle, principle of adequacy. What it means? Well, it's more or less quite connected with the principle of formalization. That's why you will find both in the same limit in the code. So, Legal activity is fair. This is it's about fairness. No? It's fair when it pursues 
human ends, values, and third principles, all the things that are in the, that level, that higher level of the legal system, well, the legal activity to confirm and specify, and if not, it, it's unfair, is <laughs> not, at the end of the day, it's against the law, no? against the high, higher level of, of the legal system. So that's why the lower level, the level of the will, should be uh, adequate with the higher level. No? I think that these things has had a have no problem. So let's go to the most important principle and value that is the value and the principle of equity. I don't know if you have heard something about equity in your career in some other subject. Don't you? Any one of you? <laughs> yes, that's Um Yes, we've learned about equity. And in fact, we learned about it in two regards. Sorry, I, I cannot it. hear you. I, I see, but nothing, nothing. I see just the, the uh, microphone up and down, but I cannot hear you. Maybe you can increase. Uh, in, okay, so no. Abdirahman, if you want, you can write. Uh, Abdirahman, yes. Yeah, uh, we have done, we've done equity. We've oh, said that wow. equity. Is I cannot hear you. <laughs> Any one of you. I don't know Can what you hear happened. me? <laughs> it seems to be a problem with my computer. Let me try. If you want. Uh, what about? Okay. No. Hello. No, I think that that this is so. Snim, once again, can you repeat me, please? So okay. sorry. Okay, I guess I guess I'll say what I was saying, and then I'll let um, Absher go on after me. So what I was saying is that yes, we've learned about equity, and in particular, we learned about it in two regards. So yeah. we learned about the equity formed through English common law, um, through the Court of Chancery, the Chancellor, all of that. And then we also learned about equity as a form of natural justice when applicable in international law. Good, in international law. And uh, what yeah. about the, 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 the relation? Yeah, the first thing, how is involved equity with a natural law or com common, common law? Um, Okay, so through the English common law, equity was developed as a way to soften the rigidity of that common law to develop principles, rights, um, remedies, in order to help um, add on to the common law. And then um, in relation to the natural justice, it was used as a means, again, to um, soften the rigidity of the procedure of the law, to bring in some justice such that it even if a case is very rigidly conforming to a procedure, the mm -hmm. law is able to move away from that procedure and instead apply principles of natural justice when mm -hmm. determining a case. Good, 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 good. Uh, and have you heard this uh, in arbitration about equity in uh, alternative uh, dispute uh, means of resolution? Um, I think that should be Article 159.3 of the Constitution that actually talks about principles of natural justice. So, yeah. yes. And then we also have the Judicature Act, Section 3, which talks about a morality clause. So it has a repugnance uh -huh. to morality clause mm -hmm. that um, ensures that if ADR... Okay, this is in particular, it's in regards to customary law. And so... Um, traditional dispute resolution mechanisms or alternative justice systems. But yes, um, morality is something that is highly considered in um, alternative methods of dispute resolution as okay. for the laws of Kenya. Perfect. Okay. Good. I, I think that uh, you, you have some idea, a very good idea of what could be 
equity. We will try, we will try to improve this idea here <laughs> if we can, obviously, no. But uh, it is it is very important. Uh, first, because there is some sense that all people used to think in their minds that what could be equity, no? What could be equity? And uh, yes, more or less. It sounds more or less like some mercy uh, in the in the natural in the in the court of the UK. Well, as you know, uh, there is a set of cases about equity uh, that creates another proce procedure, something different, uh, a little different, because you have to apply some mercy some in some cases that is the usual law probably done it's not so good to apply it as such no um, but what is the relation between these two concepts and, uh, and so many other concepts of equity no yeah because they realize that from the very beginning a uh, summa juria summa summa juria summa injuria a phrase in Latin that, that means that if you apply the, the, uh, the law strictly in every case without any exceptions, you will harm the people, no? And it is not so good for the legal system, so you have to put some exceptions, no? Uh, to the rigid law. <laughs> uh, and to apply the law, but with a, a little a mercy. That's why and it, it, there are so many cases uh, that you can find in, connected with the natural law, but also uh, well, the equity in the uh, in morality. And, but and what is equity in both places? And also the equity in, in alternative uh, dispute resolutions uh, means. No, so. What is equity in, in all these kind of things? No? A good definition you can find here. Justitia dulcore misericordia temperata. <laughs> what means justitia dulcore misericordia temperata? Well, this is a definition of Cardinal Ostiense from five centuries ago, I think so. That means justicia, no? Uh, used to well, the, the, the the just, uh, well, the, the decision of the judgment uh, should be dulcore, uh, should have some sweet, <laughs> uh, sweet mercy, mercy misericordia, temperata, no? Temperata, uh, should, should have, no? So, if you judge, some case so you have to apply some kind of mercy this is the the probably the, the common understanding of equity duta yes you want to say or ask something oh sorry no i think my i guess my hand by mistake so. Okay, good. Uh, so, but what, what is the problem with this definition? Probably, obviously, it, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. But there could be so many problems with this definition. No? Uh, not in all, in every legal system because there are so different legal systems, no? Uh, and normally in the states nowadays, in the countries, uh, you have to apply more mercy, no? more mercy. Why? Because every day the criminal code puts more and more and more uh, years of prison for the same uh, <laughs> Crimes, no, it's incredible, it's incredible, no? Every every time criminal law is harder. But the same doesn't happen 
uh, in, for example, in the legal system of the Catholic Church. No? Uh, the Catholic Church, uh, and probably in other religions could, be, could happen the same, I don't know. But from time to time, you, uh, there, there's, there's a, a, a lot of crimes, obviously, no? but crimes uh, in, the, in the legal uh, canon law area. Uh, obviously, no one is punished by, by the jail, <laughs> but with another kind of spiritual punishment. No? And the problem there is that uh, people used to think, well, uh, I have to apply mercy. No? And mercy is so in the heart of this legal system, no? But applying mercy and forgetting to apply any kind of punishment, well, you also commit a not good thing, no? Uh, you have from time to time to apply some punishment. If you never punish anyone, it, 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 it will be a problem. For example, think about if in this society, no, we never punish no one. No? Never, there is no one in the jail. All the jails are empty. <laughs> what will happen? What will happen? It is good this or not? No, it is not good. It is not good. Probably crimes will increase and bad habits will increase also and there will be no security and no, there, a lot of, of problems will appear. So, and the same happened, another example, in the, in the society with crimes and in every family. Think about a parent that never say to their children that something is wrong and you don't have to do because, well, that parents are creating a monster. Their children will be a monsters <laughs> because they will feel so free to kill or to, and to do whatever they want, and they will have no morality standards. So you have to 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 sanction it, to punish certain conduct. That's why the, a canonist lawyer give us a better definition of this one. That is, equity is the voluntary action that decides or defines the law. Performing according to mercy, yes, but he acts, Hervada, Javier Hervada, an Spaniard canonist, and according to all virtues. It's not just a matter of mercy. Equity is a matter of all virtues. I think that this is a great definition of equity, the best one that I, I have ever read. Why? Because if you want to, to apply justice in its deepest sense, so you should apply not just mercy, you should apply mercy and justice also. Because if you don't punish the ones who kill uh, a, 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 a guild, for example, well, you are creating a lot of insecurity and the parents and the family will be uh, so sad because uh, there is not justice in this society and so on. No? So you have to apply mercy, justice, but not just mercy and justice. You have to apply also uh, with another virtue, punctuality. No, must must be the judgment on time, not in forty years. <laughs> no, on time, uh, very soon. No, and you have to apply uh, what uh, respecting uh, uh, all the the things that uh, are all the provisions of the process giving time to all parties to present proofs to to give the opinion etc so 
equity, the best notion is according, not just for mercy, but with all, to all virtues, no? Okay, and so we should say that equity is a big principle, a great principle uh, that governs all legal activity or should govern, should govern. But in the legal activity, we have two kind of cases, a cases with just one just option or a cases with multiple uh, options. If there are multiple options, for example, many options, uh, a judge, think, uh, think about a judge, uh, uh, a person who stole a wallet in the bus because he needs some money to, to survive and because and, well, you, you can imagine all, all, all the picture, no? Uh, well, the judge should decide this case. And for, for decide this case, she, uh, he see that in the criminal code, that conduct, uh, that crime is punished from with one to 10 years. If you apply mercy in this case, if you apply equity in the, pre, in the deepest notion, probably the judge will give just one year, not 10 years, no, because wants to put some mercy no? and have a lot of possibilities. And this, guy, in this case, I think that could be clear, no? And let's think about another case now, and the case of the policeman that see that a, someone is parking in, in not the, the proper place, in a forbidden place. So she, he, he should put a fine, a fine. And the, and the, the law say that this fine is, I don't know, a, a $10 or whatever you want. No? A, he, he has not two options, just one, put a fine, of that and if you want you can appeal uh, to the judge and say that well it was not correct but in that case in that case the uh, uh, equity is just to put the fine on time and, and so on so uh, i think that it, it, this is more or less the two cases to understand what could be okay so the uh, joy was raising uh, her hand. Yes, I had a question. Oh, okay. I had a question. Um, when he finds equity as a voluntary action, is it the voluntary action of the legislator or is it the voluntary action of the judge? And if it's the voluntary action of the judge, does that mean that equity as a principle is only confined to common law? Yeah, uh, okay, it's not, as I said, <laughs> uh, let's share it again, but it, it's a good question because you have something uh, very specific in your mind about equity, and I want to, to show you that equity is a broader concept that applies to every kind of legal activity. It's one of the four principles of the legal activity. So you should use equity, not, not just a legislator, not just a, a, a judge, not just in the court, not, but also in any kind of agreement, in any kind of decision, personal decisions also, in any kind of legal business, in any kind of company, in any kind of legal activity. <laughs> and also with, with the unfair things, well, you, you should be, yeah, if someone commits some crime, you should guide your judgment with the principle of equity. Okay, it's, it's a good question because it's, and the things that are in the legal system, some set of cases of equity, for example, 
or in alternative means of, of resolution of, the, uh, of, of cases, you have some application of, the, of equity, but it, it is not all. Equity is a broader concept that you could and should apply to every kind of legal activity. Okay. Okay, thank you. Good. Uh, so what else? Uh, well, uh, and I think that that many many laws try to improve the decisions of the judge, uh, saying, "Well, you have to be on time. You have to take care of another." Well, if you understand equity as a, a synthesis of all virtues, you will realize that it is very reasonable. Yes, Tasneem. Um, I just wanted some clarification on the latest, the last example that you gave in relation to the parking fine and the judge um, deciding on a sentence. Uh, in giving those examples, were you trying to prove that equity can be applicable in any form or that sometimes equal equity might not be the re the best route to take i i didn't really understand that yeah i mean if if you have just one fair option equity that is to say if the if the ones who give that uh, should decide the case uh, should apply equity uh, should apply all the virtues no and should put the fine on time in the correct place and explaining well and so on. Equity, remember, is to apply justice with all kind of virtues. Okay, more or less. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, I okay. different. I, if you have many options, equity uh, should should put the well should should put mercy and choose the. the which one is, is better for each case, with mercy and with all virtues. Okay, more or less. So, so equity provides more options well, as a result of the mercy and virtues. Yeah, n not provide uh, more options, but uh, because uh, there are cases with, uh, with just one option. And for example, uh, for, for a policeman, no? Okay. The, he ha, he has just one option if he, he sees something wrong, put the fine because the law says that uh, the, the person probably will have another kind of options to appeal and so, and so on. Yeah, but is is to to if there is some one option, equity is to choose that one option. If there is many options, oh. uh, equity is to choose. The most merciful one. Okay. 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 I think I understand now. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. So let's go ahead now with legal arts. Legal arts is a kind of legal activity. What kind of legal activity? Arts carried out by one or more subjects of law with a specifically legal intentions. We have, we, we can compare. No? There are things that doesn't have a specifically legal intentions. For example, friendship. If you want to have friends, you never think in any kind of legal uh, uh, status or, or legal effect that will have friendship. Friendship has uh, so many legal effects, not just one, so many, so many. And probably uh, if you, for example, if you have a, a very good friend, probably you, you will be not a very good witness uh, in the trial against that that friend of yourself no uh, uh, why because well uh, you are partially cited 
with, with that guy, probably. I don't know. In any case, legal act always has uh, a, have a specific legal intention. Wants to produce some specific legal intention. That is the, the, the first idea. Uh, for example, when you buy a car, obviously you are thinking in the car. <laughs> Uh, what kind of things you can do with the car uh, will be uh, traveling uh, around a uh, well. But obviously, when you give the money and you receive the car, you are doing an, a specifically a legal transaction, and you are putting your will in this regulated transaction. Okay. This, this this is good marriage obviously if you uh, get married by married so you uh, have put in your will in a specific in transaction legal transaction with a specific effect okay and as we have seen the lies of legal conceptions how they begin, develop, transmit, uh, and finish, we will see now the life of legal act. The life, well, and here we will be focused especially in when these acts uh, are valid, um, precarious, and how they ex extinguish their life. No? But for understand all these kind of things, we should know first what is a perfect life. What is a perfect life? Because uh, if, we, if we want to know uh, if some agreement, for example, is null and void, no? probably we have first to understand how uh, are the valid acts and what kind of thing this act uh, has not. Uh, so let's see the requirement of the perfect life <laughs> of the legal act. What kind of re uh, requirement could be? Well, first, legal act, uh, uh, first requirement that the people involved know how to do it because if you don't know how to to sign a loan loan agreement or a lease agreement probably you will not be able to, to sign that no because you have to put the will in something specific that you more or less know more or less and if you don't know nothing at all you have no idea about that a, a contract well, you cannot put your will there. No? Second requirement that the people involved want to do so. Want, no. First is a matter of knowledge. Second is a matter of the will. Put your will there. No? If you never put your will in some agreement or contract, obviously that contract is it is not no it's, it is null because needs needs the will uh, third requirement no? that they can do it and here we can see that there could be so many things depending on which kind of legal branch or area we are talking about so that they can do it because for example you cannot get married if you have only five are only five years old no <laughs> yeah you need some age to get married <laughs> uh, so and you have well also competence for example the the i don't know the governor cannot uh, approve general laws of the country. 
no? because this is competence of the parliament and probably the parliament I mean, and some related with the praise president no they approved some kind of regulation and some kind of laws and that things are not competence of the governor of the city for example no? so competence also no? every people should be able to do something no? uh, skills from, from time to time no? well, obviously for certain time contracts when you hire someone because he knows how much some specific well probably if you don't have that skills you, you are not able to sign that contract no and non-prohibition why non-prohibition no? well because in, for some contracts are some prohibitions no? for example if a guy kill the husband of, of the woman of the of the wife you know he cannot be married with that woman there is a prohibition no because it's more or less uh, to to confirm that probably if he wants and he killed the husband to get married with that woman no? because the law cannot confirm an evil act no? and that's why there is a prohibition in many countries of this kind of marriage well so you have you, you uh, uh, the third requirement that they can do it i don't know i think that is more or less clear fourth one that they do it well the form the form you know? it's not enough to get married uh, just uh, and say i want to be married <laughs> and there is a form a specific form for every uh, person no? you have to go there and ask i don't know if you are catholic the priest um, choose one day in a specific place and but if you are not uh, getting married in the correct place probably will be null and void in that that but that uh, contract the, the marriage you, know? you have to do well in the correct form because if not it will be a precarious contract and finally that it produce its own effect efficacy because there is nothing against them yes for example if i put a condition of selling my computer to you you give me the money now and i give you my computer after my lectures no? it, 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 specifically tomorrow but today there is a fire in my home and I lose my computer. I cannot give you my computer because to, in tomorrow there will be not <laughs> computer at all. No? It's just ashes. <laughs> uh, obviously, and obviously, uh, with that conditions, I the the contract at the very beginning was good. Was uh, was correct from. You can do sell your computer. You and I know very well how to buy and sell, and so on. But it produces not all the effects. Why? Because something happened in the middle <laughs> of the transaction. So these are the common requirements of every kind of legal act every kind of legal act and it will help you so much for understand why for example a treaty could be null a contract could be null uh, a will a decision uh, and so many things any kind of uh, activity if you, or, or 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 if it could have some problems so we can distinguish with these requirements many types of legal life first the validity the validity is, is 
is so easy. What are the valid contracts? The valid contracts are those contracts that fulfill the requirements one, two, three, four. This is a valid contract. Probably could, a valid contract from time to time doesn't produce all the effects that are foreseen in the contract. No? The, the, the final is, is a matter of efficacy. It's not a matter of validity. Another, and well, this is the first type of fact. The second type of fact, non-existent, non-existent. There are agreements that never exist. Yeah, and it is very interesting. I will explain why. No? Then the precarious contracts or the precarious acts well, that could be declared null and void because these kind of legal acts uh, ha, uh, has some have some problems uh, problem of the con the will of the knowledge of the form or of the competence or skills capacity and so on no? and finally uh, the effectiveness of the legal act and, and how it could be extinguished. I don't know if you have any question about the requirements because I will explain a little more, but now with the code about the life, a little more, just a little more, because today we have so many things to see. No, perfect. I will share now you the code to, to see the, the same, no? Here we have the same, no? The legal acts alive. And in the legal acts alive, you have the, the five requirements that I showed you. Yeah. And the kind of life that could have every legal act. The validity, as I said, only requires four things. Which four things? The same four things that are at the beginning of the perfect legal life. No? The knowledge, the, consent, uh, the will, the form, the competence, but not efficacy. Efficacy is quite different. Validity and efficacy are two different notions. Uh, about efficacy, we will see something. No? Then, there are a chapter of non-existent legal acts and a precarity. Two different things. Uh, it's very good to know uh, to, to what could be the difference. Have you seen this in another subject or no? I don't know. Uh, it is very helpful and many times uh, so many problems in the courts are about uh, nullity and these kind of things. Have you seen? No. Yes, Rosaline. Um, I think this has something to do with um, something being void and something being voidable. So mm -hmm. void, I think, would be the non-existent um, legal act. And the voidable one would be the one that's precarious. You can do something to make it valid. OK, well, here you have more or less a, a the theory, I will explain some key concepts. Uh, and But you, don't you know which, which is the, the difference of non-existent legal act between the others, null or etc. That's name, yes. Um, I'm not sure, but I think I think it might be related to the principle of, um, I can't remember the first part, but it's <laughs> ab initio, like nulli nullified from the beginning, ab initio, eh, that we've talked about as family law. I don't know if that's... that's yeah, it is it, it, the same in family law and in so many places. Duta, yes. 
Um, I think null acts are the ones which are non-existent, so they can never be valid, but for precarious acts, they can be validated. Yeah, well, it, it is very important to know because in, in, in so many places in countries, there, there is a distinction, not in all, this is the problem, uh, but it's very good to know the difference. No? I will explain you the, the difference with a, a a crazy example. No? What happened if you ask me my identification, no? my one card who show who I who am I, no? and I show you a card with the picture of Mickey Mouse and the name of Mickey Mouse and seems to be the usual identification of, of every citizen here in Kenya, huh? but with the, 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 for, the picture of Mickey Mouse <laughs> uh, with the name. You will believe in me or not? <laughs> no one. Why? Because <laughs> the, the professor is so crazy, no? He's in the space. <laughs> So uh, I don't believe in the professor. Uh, yes, uh, and you will be right in that uh, appreciation. Uh, yeah, because it, it is not possible. It it doesn't seem uh, that there, there is not a legal appearance of this this identification. Well, and it is good because to know because if you don't have uh, the appearance, if the act never seems more or less legal, uh, you don't have to go to the court and ask to the judge to declare that that identification or that contract or that legal act is null and void. It's evident that it's null and void. This is the, the interesting thing. You, 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 you could, could go faster and never apply this because it, it, it seems not true. Yeah, that is the importance of this. So, non-legal existence. The key words to understand here is the elements of the essence of the legal act. This, you know, if the legal act lack lacks of one or more elements of the essence of, of that legal act so we could say this is a non-existent act legal act no? for example if you see two guys that wants to get married no? but both have, have five years <laughs> just five years old they are no so you will see well this is not a marriage it is and you don't have to go to the court to declare uh, that within in a judgment that it is null and void because it's so obvious it's so obvious so this is the the very interesting thing and so you have to check if the essential elements of each contract of if each demand or, or each agreement or each legal act uh, exists so and then you will be you will realize if, if there are all the elements you can see that probably could have another kind of of uh, problem nullity for example nullity huh? when could be nullity well when it's against the law when there is a defect of the consent because there is some error is created without sufficient capacity. Uh, there, there are many causes. You will read. I, 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 I think that this part will help you to understand better you and some other parts of the uh, career, no? Because you can apply all these concepts in so many uh, 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 parts of, of, of the career. And here you have the thing that you told me, no? Some null acts 
has effects, effects x tung and other x nung. You, you, you will see, no? Or an absolute nullity when it's against nature and against reality. How the simulate acts works and how they can be validated. Well, this is the precarity and about the efficacy. We can talk about so many things. You will read a synthesis here. Um, normally, normally, for example, if you sign a sale agreement, if I give you my computer and I receive the money, it's done. There is no more legal effect. But from time to time, some legal acts, for example, a law can has uh, uh, retroactive effect or post effect. There could be two things, no? For example, a natural retroactivity. The, the, for example, it's very famous The if the criminal law is not longer in force, well, all the crimes that were punished in the past and people are in jail, suffering in the jail because that crimes, well, you should, uh, that, that revocation will have retroactivity effects. For sure you know. Uh, well, this is one case, but probably could be many cases. You will read so many cases when the laws or the contracts has a, uh, retroactivity effects. Uh, and the contrary, the contrary is the superactivity, also call it ultraactivity, also call it postactivity, also call it hyperactivity. I don't know if you have heard about this. <laughs> when, for example, a law that was uh, revoked uh, one year ago, today we can apply the same law. Well, there are so many cases. I will put you just one, uh, just an example. No? Uh, for example, if a big company of energy signed a contract with the state two years ago, and one year, uh, one year ago, the state changed all the rules, changed the, the energy law of, of Kenya. Well, probably in so many contracts, there is a clause that includes, includes all the laws of the country of that time in the contract. And that's why even if the law of the country change, even if that happened, uh, the laws will continually, you know, permanently will be applied after that, because in the contract uh, you incorporate, that, uh, you're incorporating, incorporating all the laws of the countries at that time. So this is one case of, of legal superactivity. Uh, you will read so many cases but, and so many other cases, no? You, you will see. Uh, uh, this part, if you want uh, more information, well, you can ask me, uh, but I think that is easy and is very good for your formation to know about how these kind of things could work. No? So let's go ahead with the next topic. That is the types of legal activity, this one. Remember here we will do the Kahoot in a few minutes after explaining you main difference of a, a each kind of legal activities. We begin 
the classification with a phrase of Ulpian. Time ago, many centuries ago, Ulpian brought this uh, jurisprudence is the awareness of divine and human affairs. The science of what is just and what is unjust. It is very, very interesting because it's not just a matter of what is just. It's just also a matter of what is unjust. This is jurisprudence. And that's why we are studying now, not just the just thing, <laughs> but also the, the unfair and just. No? So, classifications of legal activity could be a lot. Let's give some criteria to, to do that. First, according to the object of the will, there could be uh, actions and omissions. No? A positive uh, will or a negative will, do or not to do. It's so easy to decide. I think that it has no problem. But also could be actors wanting, desiring, deciding, choosing, possessing, moving, or the opposite, no? the positive and the negative also here. No? Uh, but I think that it, it, it is clear. No? Uh, and you can decide and the, that decision uh, has a lot of legal effects. No? Did you decide, for example, uh, to sign a will? No? <laughs> uh, or, to, or if you choose one car or not another to buy, uh, or if you possess some land, and so on. No? Uh, all these acts of the will has have uh, a lot of legal effect. Let's go to a uh, second criteria. According to the obligation to act, it is so easy also, no? It can be do compulsory or not optional, no? You uh, shall obey the law, no? You never uh, can kill the innocent, no? Uh, this is compulsory. But on the other hand, you have a lot of possibilities, for example, in private law especially, no? you can do something, or, but not another thing, etc. Georgina, yes, do you want to ask something or say something? I have a question. Yes. Um, when, you, when you discuss according to the object of the will, could you give an example? Yeah, I, I gave someone, some examples, not just one. An action and a mission, I think that is a clear or not. Do you want an example of an omission? Yeah. Okay, I gave you one, for example. If you are in the middle of the day and you are a worker, and you are sleeping. <laughs> In that case, uh, you have to work. Work. Here is work. Uh, you have to work. No? That, so that omissions have some legal effects. And that's why it's a legal activity. Not a good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. An act of w deciding, no? Deciding to write a will. To, to give your properties to your su successors uh, or to choose one card, to choose to buy one car specific or to possess the land no? or to move yourself to uh, another city uh, or to another country with a different uh, laws. It will change your legal space and that decision of moving yourself to live in another country will have a lot of legal effects, no? and also wanting, no? to want, I don't know, uh, well, some expectations if you want 
for example, to win the lottery and you buy a ticket and so on. No? It, it is not, no, it's just to, to show you more or less how it works. No? Uh, in any case, if you want some more examples, I can give you more. <laughs> but I think that all of them are okay. No? Uh, according to the regulation, it is so easy uh, because there are agreements, for example, that are ruled, uh, are very uh, ruled in the or regulated in the positive law, and some of them no. Uh, leasing, buy and selling. Uh, um, I, I don't know. There are a lot of pro provisions in the law about this kind of uh, agreements. No, are ruled or regulated, or, or the crimes are typified, regulated. No, and instead of that, there are so many things not regulated. No, uh, especially in private law. According to the generality, it is so easy also. Uh, there could be a general act or a particular one, no? a general, if it applies to a generality of cases, things or subjects. Any, for, for example, the constitution of Kenya, it applies well to every citizen. No? Uh, but if you sign a specific contract, well, the, the, every contract is with a specific party, no? A particular uh, legal act is when it is more specified, no? And I, I think that this is easy. We will see a little more this. Depending on the duration in time, well, it can be a single track or a successive track. track. For example, a contract of sale. If I sell you my computer, I give you my computer, you pay me the money and don't. Yeah? It is. Uh, probably you can go to another country and the contract is, is well done. <laughs> but it's quite different in the working uh, agreement. No? Because if if I sign a, a work agreement with the university, I have to go to the university every day and to teach uh, every week or every day. I don't know. Uh, so the second one is the uh, an legal act of a successive tract because that transaction is a, is a long duration transaction. And it foresees a many, many, a series, and there's a problem, a series of acts over time. Okay, I think that more or less it, it, it is. And now the most important, the most important because it will help you to play Kahoot. <laughs> uh, this one. Well, according to justice, it can be a fair and fair act, no? Uh, a contract of buy and selling uh, or an unfair, no? A crime. Uh, according to the intentions, it can be simple acts or business, no? Simple acts, friendship, no? Or business, well, business, uh, because friendship needs two, two people or more. Uh, it's a business. Uh, a simple act is just one person no? uh, that cause legal effects without intentionally seeking them as happened with friendship or crime. If someone com commits some crime, obviously it's not seeking the legal effect. The legal effect, what could be? Well, to be in prison 10 years, no? The guy who killed uh, her, his wife, well, is not seeking to be in jail 10 years. No? <laughs> it's, it's probably seeking to, to satisfy 
his passions, <laughs> but not to be in jail ten, uh, ten years. No? That's why uh, it is not an illegal act, it's a simple act. Instead of that, we have the legal, uh, on the other hand, we have the legal acts. No? We have said that legal acts intentionally seek to cause certain legal effects, no? An agreement, a decision of, of, of approve one law, and so on, no? So, according to the subjects involved, it can be a especially legal act, no? Business, a legal business it could be a bilateral or multilateral with just one party or more, two parties or more. A decisions, decisions based in a private or public power. What kind of decisions? Well, here's the, the, the easiest one, no? personal decisions. No? For example, uh, he is a monk, say an oath of celibacy. Well, it's a personal decision with a lot of legal effects also in so many laws, no? It, it is, it is self-binding, no? Personal decision. But also could be with a public power. What means a public power? We have seen Lecture, some lectures ago, that if you have a public power, you can modify or specify the legal space of others. You can, you can do something uh, that creates new rights in, or new duties in other, in any, anyone that is not due. Well, that is a general, well, a, sorry, a jurisdictional decision. It's not a personal decision, but it's a jurisdictional decision. That you have some power to change the legal space of the others, no? Uh, and could be that jurisdictional decision general or singular or specific also, no? It's called, no? The general to a, gener a generality of people, bind the generality of the government, for example. The parliament who enacts uh, one statute law, well, is, is uh, using that kind of public power to put a general jurisdictional decision. On the other hand, on the other hand, if the government, uh, for example, approve one request of, of you uh, that you saw time ago asking the recognition of the, I don't know, of some property. Um, the government recognize, uh, recognize you that uh, property, well, it's not a general jurisdiction of decision because it's not for all the citizens of Kenya. It's just for you. You are a specific guy, a specific subject uh, who uh, are bind with that decision of the goal. I don't know if you have any question here. I will put some other examples now. But if you have any question here. So let's put the first example, this guy. This guy is writing a contract. He's writing, he's writing obviously a draft, a draft. What do you think? This, you, you can also put here in the chat the answer because I will ask many, many things. What do you think? Uh, 
this act of the will of writing a draft of the contract, what it, it, what it is? A simple act, a legal act, a business, legal business, personal decision, general jurisdictional decision, or, or what? Yes, Joy. I think it's a legal act because by writing, he has the intention of creating a legal relationship with the person who is he is contracting with. Yeah. Yeah, well, I will say uh, that it's not a legal act because uh, probably it's a simple act. Uh, it's called the preparatorious act in some places, no? The things that you do in order to someday have something that binds you. But the draft is just a draft. Yeah, it doesn't bind you, doesn't bind the parties because it should be signed by two parties, a contract. This is just a draft, okay? That's why it's a tricky question, absolutely a tricky question, but it's just to, to show you how it works. No? Let's go with another a promise. A promise between two friends. A promise to, uh, I don't know, to be loyal till the end of their life. What could be? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, Duta, yes. Um, I think this one is a simple act as well. Well, another option. <laughs> uh, Georgina. I'd say it's a personal decision. I don't know. A personal decision? Well, it seems to be loyalty is so general, no? It's not. But it's not a, a simple act. Remember, if there are two or more people, what is this? A business, a business. So could be a legal business or a simple business. Probably if, if it is about friendship, a promise of two friends, probably it is a simple business, simple business. I'm using here more or less the terminology of the German jurist. By the way, I think it is important. In this specific thing, there is a lot of confusion because you have so many schools of the law that use the same terms to, for different things. For example, if you ask uh, what is an illegal act to a, a, a French jurist, they, he will say something different of a German jurist. I'm following more or less, uh, improving a little the terminology of the German uh, jurists. So uh, it is, uh, it's important to, 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 to distinguish that. Okay. Uh, Yes, uh, now Tasneem. Um, I just wanted to ask, in terms of the subject involved in the person writing a draft contract, because you said it's just a draft, yeah, would it just... be self-binding? So it would be a personal decision? Uh, but it's just a draft. The intention is not to, to bind because it's just improving little by little what could be the, 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 the con contract. And every contract needs two parties to, to, to bind anyone. Okay. But, but in relation to the subject involved, because I mean, my understanding of what we're doing is we're trying to identify the intention and then the, the um, category it falls under in relation to the subjects involved section yeah, as well. Yeah, but, but okay, but now think about this. Uh, that draft, you can ask to, to the ones who's writing the draft to, 
to fulfill any provision or any duty? No, because there is no duty at all. You first have to sign at least one or two, um, probably two, and then it will have some legal effect. Obviously, who rights have some in mind some some legal effect, but is but is just improving at the beginning. I think so. Uh, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, so then, based on what you've just said, you're <laughs> saying that if there's no legal effect, then you cannot determine either um, the intention or the subjects involved under these types. So it's not a type of legal activity. Essentially, yeah, that's right? why it's just a, a simple okay. act like, like friendship. Friendship, you, you never, you never seek it, writing a draft is just using your imagination. In your imagination, you can create so many things, no? but when you put the will, well, a, well a, a, to a specific legal effect, uh, then it's a personal decision or a legal business, whatever you want. Okay. But good, good, good question. Uh, 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 let's go to an, an, uh, Georgina. Do you want to say something? I have a question. Yeah. When when you when you uh, uh, the the first example this example that is here with us the one of the friendship. Mm -hmm. Did you say it's simple acts or? You said simple act or business, but I don't understand why. Is it a personal decision to be bound to the friendship, or isn't it like? No, simple, it, not remember, like, simple act or business, uh, you have not in mind a specific legal effect. Okay? And if there is two okay. or more parties, uh, like friendship is business. If it's just one, probably it's just a simple act. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. No, no, but it is it is important to to be clear. So now, without explanation, another example. This thing. A keys. You put in the box a uh, one certain document and you put the lock to uh, protect that document uh, and you keep your your key the keys obviously no what kind of thing could be this it, it is not so easy i recognize that because you have to know a little about information law but what do you think Putting lock to the to to some document, locking that document. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, any of you, Georgina? I think I forgot to put my hand down, but I don't know. I'd say, according to the obligation. Act, it can be optional. I don't know. Well, that's name, yes. So I'm I'm going to guess because I'm not sure, <laughs> but I'm going to I'm going to presume the fact that this lock um okay, this is a very big assumption, but the fact that this lock is used by an advocate to protect their client confidential document. For example, okay. Yeah. So if you use that particular example, then you can see that there's an, a legal act, first of all, because yeah. there is a legal effect between the attorney and the client in which you have this um, trust between the parties and you have this understanding. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. And let's go one step. It's a legal act. I agree with you. But okay. legal acts could be business, personal decisions, general jurisdictional decision, specific and jurisdictional decision. Which one of these would be? Mm, okay. Um, maybe, maybe you could say specific jurisdictional decision. And the reasoning behind this is that the law 
governs attorney-client privilege. And so the law kind of has a decision yeah, that's that made. Decision. Yeah, no, it's a personal decision. Why? Because you, you, you will have all time, no, but it's good, good to try, good to try. Why? Because uh, obviously you will have in all your, your, in many actions of your life, some, some statute law, uh, some general jurisdiction law. But you have not a specific power to bind another. General uh, jurisdictional decision is you need some power to bind another. And here is just a, a personal decision to look to, to protect some documents. Next one. This. And here is the synthesis, no? Uh, well, this one. You, uh, someone who is stalling some documents, no? Uh, what could be? What kind of... Uh, you can write also in the chat if you want. Now, uh, Rosaline. Um, could it be a simple act? A simple act. Good, good. I think that is so easy. A crime, any kind of crime is a simple act. You're, you're not seeking to be in jail five years. <laughs> Obviously, no? Uh, let's go. This one. The guard that is controlling the mates of this place, no? What kind of le activity, legal activity is doing? Rosaline, yes. Um, could it be a general jurisdictional decision? Yeah, probably it could be a general supervising, yeah. We can see also in front of the employee, the, the, the country, no? probably is a, he's fulfilling an, a work agreement. No? And so if we see the activity of controlling, yes, you are right. No? But if we see the, the, the fulfilling of the, the work agreement, we, we will see that that is a uh, legal business because it's between two parties with some legal effects. But, but good, good. This <laughs> two boy scouts uh, giving the oath <laughs> of doing every day a good action, a good boy scout. <laughs> what kind of, of legal activity could be this? Yes. Uh, well, uh, uh, there is a question, but I think that uh, uh, could be yes, could be a personal decision and a personal de decision. Personal decision, I don't think so. About the last slide, but in any case, here, here, you know, the voyage scout, Georgina, yes. Simple act. A simple act. Well, uh, yeah. I put a question here. Um, it is not a business, a, a simple business. What do you think? Peace. Um, maybe it's a simple business because it's between two, two or more people. So it's between the two boys and maybe um, whoever is guiding them in the yeah. scouting direction. Yeah, I think, yeah, probably could be uh, if they are giving their oath uh, to someone. No? But you can also say the oath <laughs> alone. That's why I'm more with Georgina. <laughs> uh, well, in any case, it's just an example. Uh, this thing, no? The act or many actions of building a house. What kind of legal activity could be? Mm. 
No one of you wants to try? Yes, Rosaline. Um, could it be a simple act? A simple act? No, I think, well, Georgina, what do you say? Do you say? Or Duta? Georgina, Georgina. Okay, um, I was going to say the same thing as Rosaline, but it's not right, so. <laughs> Duta, yes. I think it's a, a legal business. Yeah, why? Okay, I just ruled out all the rest. So it's going <laughs> to be a simple act. And it's not a personal decision. And then I don't think it's fiction either. So yeah, I just eliminated all the rest. When you're building a house, there is a lot of things that you do. Buying cement, buying bricks, putting bricks, hiring someone, and you are building some house for probably for for selling. And there is a lot of, of business, no? Uh, a lot of business. It's just not not one. The, and if you put a brick, it's because you are hired by the engineer to put that brick. Uh, so I think that is a legal business. You know where it is? It is London, and specifically, it is the Parliament of London, where so many laws are approved. The approval of that laws, what kind of legal activity could be? Yes, Georgina. Okay, I'm trying. I think it's general <laughs> jurisdictional. It's either specific or general. I'm <laughs> okay. One of those two. Okay, peace. What do you say? I think it's the general jurisdictional decisions because it binds generally those yeah. who are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just one guy. It's for the generality of the government, for every citizen. Good, good, good. The Supreme Court of Kenya. I don't know if you have been there. <laughs> when they judge one case, the judgment, what kind of legal activity could be? Oh, sorry. Now you don't have the, the clues. Anjando, yes. Um, I think it will be specific jurisdictional decision. Why? Um, because when they're making a decision, it's only a decision to one specific subject. Good, 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 good. And this is signing a, a, a law or a contract. I think that uh, we have answered. And this is a contract. This is a law and this is a contract. Well, it's the same. We have the same answer. So, now it's time to go to Kahoot. We continue now with the second part of the lecture that is about unfair acts, unfair things. What should we do with that kind of unfair things? For sure, you will remember. Uh, well, I don't know if you have seen th this film. There is two films about this flag. Uh, very famous photography that gained the Pulitzer Award in time ago, in time ago, in the Second World War. No, uh, was took that. A picture in 1945, where the, the militaries of the, uh, the U.S. Navy of the United States of the United States conquered this place, this island, you know? and Clint Eastwood uh, have 
has two, two movies, the two visions of the same event. No? One is the vision of the mariners of the United States, no? and all the problems to conquer this, this place. No? And the second one is the vision of the Japanese troops. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely the contrary, with the fear of the enemy that is coming, uh, with the sense of loyalty to the to the country, and uh, with the sense that we should defend our values. So, what I put here, this incredible photography picture that I said, no, that gained the the. Pulitzer Award of that year, well, and also now is an iconic image in the United States. And there are so many monument statues that represent this. No, that is most more or less for them is the conquer of liberty, no, of freedom, uh, because the Japanese. Uh, attacked the United States and they, in the vision of the United States they are defending and in the vision of the Japanese troops they uh, were defending the, their properties. No? <laughs> well, it is because not always it's so easy to see who is the enemy, uh, who is the bad guy, who is the ones who have to change. No? In so many events of our life, we can see that we have two visions, no? and we have to hear both parties to understand which could be the the the, the good one. No, more or less, is to show you, you that the word unfair is not always a clear understanding. No, unfair actions could be unfair for some people and fair so for other people. And that is not so clear. But if we gain clarity, probably we'll uh, have some solution, specific solutions in the, field, in the field of the world. So what we should do with the uh, first uh, uh, action? Well, I don't know, but uh, what do you think about it? I have brought so many things in the code, no? Here you have the, type, the general provisions, no? Uh, we have to see, well, the victim, the harm, and the injured, and also the other, no? Because we have to apply some uh, mercy also. We have to see the both parties, no? The, uh, in this way, we will be able to understand what kind of legal effects that unfair act should have. Because uh, there could be so many kinds of unfair acts. No? Could be a personal decision, a personal decision that is unfair, or is it always a crime, a simple act also, a legal business, a legal business, a band of, um, of the mafia. <laughs> Um, that wants to sell drugs and so on. No? It's an, an unfair legal business. No? And also an unfair jurisdictional decision. No? As you know, <laughs> there could be not so fair laws of the country. No? It's a jurisdictional decision. For, for, could be general or, or specific jurisdictional decision. And there are two possibilities. And what kind of effects uh, it will have, the unjust activity? Well, we, we can say that there could be so many effects. No? First, um, first uh, in the very, at the very beginning, it's clear that the one who, who commit any unfair activity should repair. There is an obligation to repair the caused damages. First one, this is, I think that is clear. Second, if you cannot repair, you have to compensate, paying money or in, in some way. 
who are asking you know, pardon or in so many ways. Then the obligation to comply with the sanctions provided by the law. There is there could be so many sanctions, no? And that is the criminal code. No? If the criminal code say if you do that, you should be in prison. How many in that years? These years you should be. It's a consequence, no? On the other hand, if there was a legal business, for example, an agreement to kill someone, <laughs> well, this agreement uh, is null and void, no? And the penalty, penalty, because it, 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 it is not exactly a penalty, is the invalidity of the same act, no? If you uh, agree something directly and evidently against the law, it, it is not valid. Simply, it, it is not valid. And finally, the legal effects that were unfairly sought tend to disappear, tend to disappear. Remember this word, tend. The unfair is never as effective as the fair. Why I say it tend? Because from time to time, think about a legal decision. No? Uh, legal decision of Hitler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not so fair. <laughs> yeah. And all the na Nazi regime. What happened with all this uh, regime? Well, there were so many laws, statute laws, a constitution, and obviously a persecution, uh, an unfair persecution, uh, a serial killer, <laughs> so many serial killers of the Jews. So, as you see, that uh, unjust decision of killing all the of these, these people, the Jews, uh, is not fair, uh, but had some consequences, some consequences. Uh, obviously, obviously, we, we, we can say that, I will repeat the same, no? The unfair is never as effective as the fair. The fair things uh, can, can be constantly and in, in, in time, no? uh, binding the people, the unfair things, not always. When people discover that it is unfair, it should fall, it should be declared null and void. There should be penalties, as you know, that happened in Nuremberg, in the same place of this great parade, in the same place <laughs> where the, the the trials of Nuremberg uh, to, against the Nazis. You know? So I think that, that, that it's clear. No? A very used phrase in that trials is that one of Gustav Drabik that we have seen. No, no law can be very unjust. And well, okay. And this is this is a, a, a phrase that I want to analyze with you. An unjust law is not law at all. <laughs> Do you agree with this or not? It's not law at all. I don't know what do you think about. Do you agree with Martin Luther King Jr.? A great politician, a great well, revolutionary. Yes, Natalie. Uh, I think that whether you agree or not depends on which side you lie in. When uh -huh. we were reading on the arguments between um, Lon Fula and HLA Hart. <laughs> Basically, when Hart was talking about this uh, this part, he mentioned, he used the example of the Nazi laws, wherein uh, he said that to the extent that they were enacted, publicized, and whatnot, they amounted to law. But then 
when you look at how um, how much they violated the very essence of the legal system, then they can't be law per se. But I think it just depends on whether you're a. But you, you, what is your answer? No, it's yeah. I agree with Martin Luther. That's mm -hmm. my answer. Another answer. I don't agree absolutely <laughs> because an unjust law has the form of the law. It's approved as any law. Seems to be, uh, it says in the title, it's a law. It, it, it has the appearance, it seems to be law. It seems to be law. The formal appearance, obviously I agree with Martin Luther King, if he, and I think that he is speaking about the material sense of the law, because it is not compulsory to, to, to obey that kind of a, a, a law that appears like, like law, like a normal law, but it is not. So, but, and I think that this, it is the sense of material character, because I think I say so many things about this. For example, this uh, second phrase, no? One who breaks an unjust law that conscience tells him is in unjust and who willing accept the penalty of imprisonment in order to arouse the conscience of the community over its injustice is in reality expressing the highest respect for law. Well, he realized that uh, we have to to obey and to accept the penalty of the unjust law, <laughs> accept the penalty to fulfill the highest law. No? And the highest law is the best respect to the higher law. So, as you see, he's using two meanings of the law, no? two meanings, and um, but we can say that, that in the material sense, in the deepest sense. An unjust law is not law at all because it's not binding you seriously. It is not reasonable. But the law, there is a second meaning of a formal law that has the form and the appearance of the, of the law. It is more or less, I think so. You see another more or less related with this. No? It says, oh, sorry. One has more responsibility to disobey just laws. He is a little different, the, the argument, because he's talking now about morality, not about uh, the law, the legal system. He is uh, a different argument. So, what we can say about these kind of things? Uh, first, uh, the principle of nullity is null uh, the unjust law. But as a principle, but as a principle, as a principle, that in principle, in principle, in principle, the fulfillment of the unjust norm cannot be required because it is not reasonable. No? As I told you in, in the comparison of the two films, well, not always it's so easy to see is one law is just and unjust. Because that's why we put just a principle. In principle, in general, and just norm cannot be required to be fulfilled. You know? uh, seriously, and just norms are never effective. This is different. This is different. And nowadays, you can find this clause in every human right declaration. A seriously unjust norm are never effective, effective, nor can be required because it is evident natural uh, of its evident natural nudity. And this is more or less the same phrase of good stuff Radbrook, no? No law, law can be unbearably unjust. Yeah. This is more or less the same. Everyone seems to be to 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 realize that uh, torture and 
crimes against humanity are so serious and uh, it is evident that it's not so good and if you do that uh, obviously you can say no because hitler told me to do that no no but you realize that there is some problem there is some problem and that's why uh, any and um, seriously and just norm could be effective on the other hand no the following provisions are seriously unjust. Well, just an example, no? in a certain way. If the norms prescribe the performance of unjust acts that are known as unjust by all, if all the society realizes that this is bad, well, for instance, it's evident, there is an evidence in the mind of the people that it is unjust and it, it could not produce legal effects normally. No? The norms that seriously and unjustifiably attempt against essential good human aims and goods. That is the clause that is in all the Bill of Rights nowadays. That, uh, well, you can put as an excuse that the authority asks you to commit something. But if that action is against the essential human aims or or goods or values, you cannot uh, put that excuse. And finally, the norms that pro prohibit the performance of just an act necessary to fulfill the main human aims. Yeah. Once again, uh, the now. On the other hand, we have uh, the, the exception. No? At the left, is the principle, the general norm, and you're right. You have uh, when tolerance uh, should be applied in these cases of unjust law. As an exception, the provisional effective and slightly unfair rules will be tolerated as long as there is no more unjust formal solution. Remember the distinction between material and formal. No? Tolerance of unjust law must meet all the requirements of the just tolerance. We will see in a few minutes what could be a just tolerance. And here is the distinction that I uh, told you. No? The material injustice, is, I have to correct this, and formal justice. No? Uh, well, uh, 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 I want to, to talk now about forgiveness and tolerance and, and the, the requirements of tolerance. I don't know if you know where it is. It's the Western Wall. The Western Wall of the Holy City, Jerusalem of the antique holy city where all the Jews, um, well, many religions used to go here uh, and it remembers uh, well, so many battles and it's a sad story because it's the only thing that remains now from the old Jerusalem that was destroyed. No? So many people used to cry there. No? Uh, remembering the great days of liberty of Israel no? and, 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 well, and so many things. There, there is a lot of stories in this place, uh, also for Muslims and uh, for other religions. Well, in any case, uh, in any case, I want to ask you about forgiveness. Should we forgive those who trespass against us? <laughs> this, this is my question for you. It's, a, it's compulsory to forgive in the law, I mean in the law, in the legal system. Should be, should be forgive those who trespass against us, a, a, a compulsory norm. What do you think about? Remember or the prayer, or Father, forgive us, those who trespass against us, 
as we, well, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. <laughs> Tasnim, yes. Um, okay, so I, I'll start by saying that I don't think that there is an obligation to forgive. It's a personal decision that one makes. <laughs> um, and just to refer to the law, we recently learned about this case. Well, we knew about it, but recently um, learned about it. Uh, it's called R versus Muhammad Abdo. So I'm just relating forgiveness to the law. And in this case, um, this person had killed a certain individual and he was brought to a court of law to be tried as a murder. Well, uh, to be tried rather um, under the offense of murder. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the person's family that he had killed ended up forgiving him. And they um, had this customary ritual that led to this forgiveness. So eventually the issue came about in which um, there was a consideration as to whether the criminal case should continue now that the victim's family has forgiven him because thereafter no witnesses actually came to court. They refused to come to court to help in um, continuing the trial. Okay, so, so it more or less you say uh, not legally, but morally mo could be um, by the, it depends also by the religion of the, every, uh, every people. Yeah, but it can also be related to the law if people choose to um, Okay, obviously by... forgiveness has a lot of consequences in the field of the law, yes. Georgina. <laughs> Sorry, my mine was similar to Taz. From from a totally moral point of view, just morally, you forgive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, but why? This is very interesting uh, question. Why uh, the legal option? Uh, the legal answer is different from the moral answer and probably for the religious answer. It depends obviously which, which kind of religion, no? But, uh, well, because the law see not just the heart of the people, um, principles see the relation with another people, no? The external relation and the things that you need for society. We will repeat here all this speech about mercy, about equity that we had at the very beginning of this same lecture. Yeah, you cannot say, well, I will forgive every crime. There will be no one in, in prison because we are good guys. <laughs> no, one thing that is that you sh should forgive in your heart all the crimes and this probably could probably could be a, a moral uh, behavior and another thing is that you have to put order in your city what happens if you forgive all the crimes <laughs> if you just put mercy without justice you know? mm -hmm. so there will be a lot of problems in that city no? insecurity increasing of crimes increasing of so many bad things so uh, it is not good for the society, nor for the, the, the criminals, nor for, for the victims, obviously. Let's say that there is no, no law in that country. <laughs> uh, so the, the answer is quite different in the field of the law, morality and religion. In the field of the law, we can say the same, uh, that forgiveness has some consequences. The, the, if the, the victim may uh, forgive the, the crime, probably could be some more consequences in, in the field of the law. Is the remission of the merited penalty, the offense received, or any pending debt or obligation, or, or which could be uh, 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 forgiveness of any kind of debt. debt. It is an, an exceptional liberality, it's optional in the field of the law, no? made by the victim or the creditor, which must be interpreted restrictively as every exception 
a reception deserves a restrictive interpretation, no? as we have seen in the last lecture. And now, two concepts, amnesty and clemency. I don't know if you have heard about this, probably it's in your constitution. Uh, amnesty, what, what is the difference here? Both is a kind of forgiveness, a kind of remission of the merited penalty. But the difference is the time, is the time when the forgiveness is applied. Amnesty is a voluntary obligation of crimes made by the authority which distinguished is, and here is the important part, the judicial process. Extinguish the judicial process and the responsibility obviously that could appear in that process. No? And clemency is the grace that grants the authority to remit totally or partially the penalty or to commute it for a more benign one. So clemency, you need uh, a judgment. You need that the whole process is in the last part, uh, the time of judgment. And the, uh, when you have the judgment, so uh, you, you, you see this guy is condemned to seven years of prison. So if he, is, he has the, the judgment, the authority could say, well, I, I will commute you that penalty. So, I, uh, as a synthesis, no? clemency is after the judgment, amnesty is before the, ju the judgment. This is the difference, no? I think that is easy and it has no problem. No? Uh, so, let's talk about now tolerance. What do you think? Should we tolerate? Is good, is compulsory or not? What do you think about? Should we tolerate? No one want to try. Yes, Joy. I think um, tolerance does not give rise to any good, doesn't serve any, and it just leads to the mm -hmm. people perpetrating more and more crime. So I don't think uh, society should tolerate anything. And <laughs> I don't think it's good. No, yeah, I don't think it's our obligation to tolerate anything. So you are in an intolerant. Okay. <laughs> Depending, depending. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so bad today, Duta. Yes. Um, okay, I would say that we should tolerate um, if it does not cause injustice or if, if it does not go against um, natural law and principles. You will tolerate just the just things. Okay. For answer these questions, we need to clarify the notion of tolerance because it's not, it is not so clear in the laws of a, I mean, in the bills of rights and in so many places. So many places now, tolerance is a good thing you know, because in this global world uh, with a lot of cultures, it, it's a, a good thing to tolerate uh, the others, no? And for example, it's a declaration of UNESCO, the Declaration on Principles of Tolerance. When you will find this first notion of tolerance, here you can see that in the, in the very beginning of the declaration, no? in Article 1, the meaning of tolerance, no? Tolerance is respect. You can remember these three words. Tolerance is respect. This is the first meaning of tolerance. And then you can add so many things. Acceptance and appreciation of the rich diversity of our world's cultures, our forms of expressions and ways of being, of being human. It is fostered by knowledge, openness, communication, and freedom of thought 
conscious and belief. Tolerance is harmony in differ difference. It's not, <laughs> look that, it is not only a moral duty. Yeah. It is also a political and legal requirement. So it is compulsory here, <laughs> at least for the UNESCO. Obviously, it is not binding in in, in a specific place. No, uh, well, uh, it, it is included here. It's binding. It's compulsory. This first minute, and here it. Let, let's see that the number one dot three. Tolerance is responsibility that upholds human rights. Pluralism, including cultural pluralism, democracy, and the rule of law. More or less, these guys are trying to attach tolerance with democracy and say, well, if you uh, believe in democracy, you have to be tolerant. So many people used to do that thing. But on the other hand, we have another meaning of tolerance. Uh, for example, if you someday go to the market store, uh, uh, the stock market, sorry, uh, the, the <coughs> broker will ask you some questions. This five questions, how long you want to keep your investment in, in the stock market? No? What is your current financial situation? Because you have to first to, to have money for your uh, everyday needs, and then you a little money you can put in the stock market. And the third question, no? what is your degree of risk of tolerance? Why? Because the price of the stocks could change so much, no? Uh, probably you have now $10,000, and tomorrow you will have with the, the, the second price because it's changing. You will have uh, just five hundred dollars, uh, five thousand dollars, and so you will risk. What 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 is your risk of tolerance? If you lose the twenty percent of your capital, you will get the money of the stock market or not? No, I will tolerate more. But forty is enough, or 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 or, or you will put the money even if you lose 100% of your capital. No? Well, in this meaning of tolerance, tolerance is not a, 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 an expression of pluralism, of democracy, of good things, of, of respect, remember, respect. No, no it is the tolerance of the evil. As the, you are losing money, it is not good. It is not good. No? And in the same, a notion you can find so many uh, laws that talk about this. No? For example, the tolerance of the crime, crime no? sexual harassment, or violence. No? no, zero tolerance in that. Zero tolerance. And for alcohol, drugs, smoking, and weapons on the schools. Zero tolerance. No, 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 no. Well, I'm very pluralist guy. I believe in democracy, and that's why I will allow uh, that kids play with uh, guns. <laughs> no, no, no. Zero tolerance because this it is a clear evil, no? Or zero tolerance about profanity also, no? And violence in the schools or in accidents. It is so common to call. an accident is not a good thing that we have to respect, no? Uh, this is uh, an everything that don't deserve tolerance, zero tolerance, once again. No? So that's why we have two meanings here. No? Tolerance as a respect and tolerance of the evil. Which one is a value? Obviously, you will say, well, tolerance as a respect is a value. But I will say that tolerance of the evil sometimes will be a value. Sometimes, sometimes. Both. Both are values. But the, the second one, if it fulfills the requirements, no? Uh, I told you 
that the unjust law could be tolerated, could, when, when it fulfills the requirements of the tolerance. So let's talk about the tolerance of the law. The notion of tolerance, once again, this, this tolerance that is well studied by the philosophy, no? is the formal non-prohibition of a minor unjust act with the consequent lack of repression, which exceptionally occurs, and this is the most important part of the concept, for the sake of a greater good, for the sake of a greater good. Because if there is not a greater good, there is not a, the notion of tolerance. This is, this is a, in this sense, first, I would put one example. Let's think about a civil war, a great civil war that happened in so many countries. For example, in the United States, about the slavery, you will remember more or less that the half of the population was pro and another against. No? And at the end of the day, one team wins. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a good thing after the civil war, war to put in prison the half of the population because they killed in the war and they were against a, a, a pro-slavery. No, it's, first, it's not possible to put in jail the half of the population. It's not possible first. Then th there will be a lot of problems, a lot of problems, no? Of judgments or, 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 or people saying yes, no, and, and all the, no. Probably it's better to give some amnesty, to forgive, to forgive the past and try to begin all things again. And that was, uh, the, the thing that happened in the United States and in many countries because a civil war is too strong. It's not so easy to resolve the things that after a civil war, the same in Spain, the same in so many places. No? So, so in this case, because there is a greater good, you can tolerate some unjust law. Some, not all of them. Yeah. In this sense, tolerance is not a manifestation of plurality or pluralism yeah, or perceivedness, permissiveness. It's not an absolute acceptance of normalization of the tolerance conduct. It's not an act of acknowledgement of the analogous right to tolerate conduct. It's not a relationship of legal equality. No, it's not a help to do things, no? I will put another example, example now, more, more inter interesting. No? In so many places, the, the courts used to approve abortion because, well, we understand that it's not so good, but let's see the poor mother, let's see the poor guy, the, the poor family in the world. Well, we will tolerate something and, and still now abortion is is a crime in so many countries but even that even that uh, well people say no we have to tolerate because well poor mother poor family poor project of life poor 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 but in the second year after the approval of that decision of the judge uh, it's incredible. It seems to be that uh, it's not just a matter of tolerance, it's a matter of rights. And, no, and now it's the right of the woman to kill someone. Now, this is, that's why we have to stress out this. In this sense, tolerance is not an acknowledgement of an, an alleged right to tolerance conduct. As well, for example, now let's go again with the civil war. No, it's, it, we, we can tolerate uh, that and forgive 
the, the slavery movement. But it's not a right to have slaves, no? <laughs> to slave labor, you know. Yeah, obviously, obviously, we can the, because tolerance, tolerance is not a, a right. Let's see now the most important part here: the requirements of tolerance. No, here's the existence of an unfair quantum. In this sense, for example, we have not to tolerate Muslims. <laughs> Why? Or, or, or Christians is the same. Why? Because every religion is not an evil thing it's a good thing we 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 can say we have to tolerate in the first sense as a respect but not in this sense of an evil thing no yeah it should be in this second sense every religion is a good thing it's not a bad evil. that's why it doesn't fit in this in this requirement no the existence of an unfair kind of abortion could be no uh, at least for me, the non-prohibition or persecution is done for the sake of a greater good. This is so important. The second most important requirement: the tolerance is not prohibited. Or at least some, in some laws, prohibits some kind of tolerance. No, the, the tolerance complies with the required duties. There is some duties that you will read in the code. No? Uh, not to harm uh, uh, anyone. Uh. But now we will say just a word of tolerance as a duty. Mary in moral in morally offenses that uh, don't have anyone minor injustice break the law uh, based on reasons of con conscience. Uh, well, the heavens whose persecutions will cause Worst evils, as it happened in the in the example of the uh, civil war, and so on. Well, probably in these cases we have to tolerate that. It's, here is a compulsory uh, rule, no? And in other ca cases, this tolerance is this forbidden crimes against humanity, as we have said. What is fundamental for the coexistence or the subsistence of society, or, or, and the things that are very serious, obviously. Yeah? So, as you see, uh, there could be, well, you have to study more, more this, no? Uh, there could be cases that is compulsory, there could be cases that is forbidden in the second meaning, the tolerance of the evil. Finally, just a word because we have seen this, and I will repeat the same now. The mixed sources, mixes, mixed with the will and the, with the legal conception. No? And we can find three kind of mixed sources of the law. Here's one legal custom, no? because in every custom you need an habitual form repeated on time. For a long time, so it includes the will, no? the will of repeat the same act, no? mm -hmm. several years. But it is not enough. We need also a conviction made with the conception that it is obligatory, it is compulsory. No, is the, these two things: will and knowledge. That's why I put here question that you can ask yourself uh, to be deeper in the notion of this. What are, could be the four causes of the custom? Which one prevails? The Britain law or customs? No? Which one could prevail if there is a contradiction between the Britain law and the customs? Yeah. Uh, and if you can answer that, you will resolve the second one. In dubio pro, pro law? Or pro custom, no? The, the one who prevails uh, will gain the favor of the law, and will gain the in dubio. No? Second, a minor custom, a practice. No? Probably the statute law are very general. But what is a practice? It is, it is the way that we apply the, 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 the general rules, no? 
uh, general practice that is uh, that everyone do the same or well, probably it is compulsory it is compulsory or also if some authority has promoted or endorsed it for example if the parliament approves one law and then some governors had said, now the law here, you should fulfill this form and do this, 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 and I will give you that right that say, well, probably this process in some cases is a praxis uh, promoted by the one authority and it is also the law. <laughs> it is also the law, part of the law and creates law. And finally, the case law. Uh, the question here is when a judgment is valid and the same. A case law could prevail over written norms, the things I think that you can answer uh, by yourself in your personal study. And obviously, if you have any kind of question, I'm open to answer you by email or by any kind of meeting. Uh, and for today, I think that it is, it is enough. We are on time.